Okay, so it is Sunday the 10th of September and it's five days until my IVs finish. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm having a bit of a wobble today. I think it was last night when I was sitting up doing my IVs on my own at 1am. And I think it's just the realization that even though this isn't my normal reality, so many people's it is and that's kind of a tough thing to deal with. Kind of not knowing what's next because I have no idea how Friday's gonna go. So it's five days until my line comes out and I get retested. And I've been told that it's quite normal um, to feel this way, especially after being in hospital and then coming home. And also apparently I've heard from a lot of the people who have CF have said that they find that um, being on such strong doses of the medications can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster in itself. So I'm trying my best to keep up and I'm trying my best to keep smiling and happy. And I have so many friends around me. Um, I have been to the gym, but I just think it's the fear that I've probably suppressed all this time that the unknown and I will do my best and I will give you everything to keep well and out of hospital but what if having this is in fact the reality that I am facing one day and I'm not meaning for this to sound in a negative light at all but what I'm saying is the reality of living and growing up with a health condition that never gives you a day off it will never allow you for one slip up one missed medication, one missed training session, or one too many emotional stresses and situations can put you back so much and put you in hospital or put you on extra medications. And for the first time I think ever, like I've sat here and wondered how, how long or how much more can I give and how much more do I have to give? And I mean, it wasn't, it was only a couple of weeks ago when I even said to my mum, I've had enough, I've had enough of coughing. Like when, like I wonder what it's like to feel normal. And I mean, I would never want to be normal because in a weird roundabout way, I am so thankful for my CF because it's made me the person I am. It's made me the stubborn, strong-willed, determined girl that I have grown up to be and the one that constantly puts fear into my parents' eyes when I decide on my next challenge and the next thing I want to do and for that I would never change because I wouldn't have created this amazing life that I have but it is times like this that you know the the harsh statistics of this condition do play on your mind the statistics that shouldn't be something that you focus on a daily basis because you would not um, you would not leave the house <laughs> frankly but it is something that you are aware of when you're having to go through extra IVs and I mean I have had so many people say that I look really well since being on these IVs which is a wonderful compliment so thank you but I think it's also hard I had someone comment on one of my photos earlier to say Sometimes putting a brave face on a hospital is easier than it is putting a brave face when you leave. And I now understand that. Because I think sometimes when you're in your home comforts, it is so much harder to convince yourself everything's going to be okay. And as much as I am giving everything and I will be training hard and I will be eating and I will be sleeping and I will be doing everything I can to beat this, and I will beat this, um, but until I know what's going on on Friday, I have no idea about where where my health is because I feel good but then I felt good before I went in and that is the problem with having an illness that you cannot see it is a silent illness alongside so many others such as diabetes and such as um, hearing loss or um, even eyesight issues or there is so many IBS I could list them um, and so if you're gonna take anything from this video I urge you to always be kind and I always always smile at someone because you just don't know what they're going through if someone is slightly off with you your response should be done with love because at the end of the day everybody has a battle that nobody knows about 
and I am sure that if you saw me walking down the street you'd have no idea and even because you can't see my IV you still wouldn't know that I had this in my arm so this week go out there and make an extra effort to put a smile on somebody's face because you just don't know whose lives you're changing as you do that and I just think for the first time in a very long time um, you can laugh at this comment and you can call me call me stupid however I've actually realised I've got cystic fibrosis <laughs> and you may think that I have now gone completely nuts but you've got to appreciate that I don't see myself as having it because I don't want it to define me and I look after it because I have to but it's not something that I think about every single day and obviously for the last couple of weeks I have had to, I've had no choice and I think seeing all the sick patients that I saw in hospital being 10 times more sicker than me still smiling and still having a laugh and a joke the strength that takes amazes me because I have no idea how they're feeling but also seeing the patients that physically can't get out of bed wired up to more machines than I can count that is when the reality of the condition hits you and I don't expect anyone to fully understand that or appreciate that because that's not their reality and it is not mine so I can't either but it is definitely something that's dwelled on my mind and you know what happens in 50 years time am I going to be this healthy or am I going to be on I suppose the reality of the situation the transplant list and obviously you know me I will do everything I can to not be because I have a life to live and I have so many things that are on my bucket list and so many challenges to complete but we all have tough days and I just want to say that is okay too it's okay to struggle and it's okay to have a day and have a day where you just grab a duvet and you don't do anything so long as you pick yourself back up and so long as you don't resist those feelings because they will eat you up inside and they won't get any better so allow yourself to feel it but also allow that feeling to leave because it's the leaving that allows a more positive thought to come through your head and we have so many thoughts passing through our heads every day and it's the ones we choose to focus our minds on are the ones that define our lives are the ones that define our day and how we feel so the power of your mind is so important so choose what thoughts you focus on wisely and I just want to send you all my love and thank you again for all your support and encouragement you guys are the best so it is Thursday the 14th um, and that means that this is day 13 and that means also that tomorrow I will be heading back up to Brompton for this line to be taken out and I believe to have my lung function tested so fingers crossed um, so I haven't vlogged as much this week partly because I've spent a large proportion of it actually asleep because from Monday and Tuesday I felt like I kind of had the flu which is a bit random um, so I wasn't feeling great um, and Tuesday evening I decided to go for a run with a friend of mine because we train all the time together and he has a race at the weekend and obviously I've got my races coming up and the only thing I can liken it to is like breathing out of a straw which I realise is the analogy that people use to describe CF anyway um, and I believe that it was because of a side effect from one of the medications I've been administering so yeah that was a challenge <laughs> to say the least I must say despite that I actually felt amazing after the run so it proves you should always go and train aside from if you actually got the flu Tuesday afternoon my line annoyingly blocked um, which is obviously a pain in the neck um, but thank god my friend Claire came to my rescue who is a nurse and saved the day so that I didn't have to have this taken out however it did mean that the Baxter, it did mean that the Baxter system I have been using which 
looks a bit like this. I don't know if anyone's ever seen one of these before. Um, and you basically, instead of using um, syringes, obviously without the needle on it, so instead of administering it via syringes and attaching it to here, you basically prime the line, so let all the air out of the line, unclip it and attach it and you're good to go. So, sounds simple, right? Until it takes over two hours to administer one because the line is near the end, which basically meant that I was on the phone to the Brompton because there was nothing I could do because I didn't have any of the drugs that I could draw up myself. And um, so I ended up going up there on Wednesday and basically they said it was fine to use the line even though it was now stiff and harder to push through meds but I thought that it would last anyway so then they sent me home with some push meds and syringes and stuff instead which has been my lifesaver because the issue has been the fact that these meds via the other system to the back of the system have been taking two or three hours at a time put that into three times a day and firstly when is a girl gonna eat but when is a girl gonna sleep so yes lifesaver so the push meds take 20 minutes so it's a no-brainer I've realized that I need to make a few changes to my life to ensure that I focus on actually looking after me and my health on a more regular basis. I mean, I do my meds and I do train all the time and rest and stuff, but I do also put others first. So, so lesson learnt, I basically need to make sure that I am more of a priority in my own life because otherwise this little blip will become a more of a reality which would suck, suck a lot. And I'm not willing to sacrifice that. So what I have got to do is put my health in a bit higher stand because obviously the more I have to go through this, the harder it is gonna be. And I've got some goals to hit. So I have two doses left. Um, so one this evening at around 10 o'clock and then tomorrow in the morning around six. And I am so excited. So I've worked out that I have had so far 40 doses. So that's 40 lots of two medications, um, which has totaled up to around 90 hours. How insane is that? 90 hours of me, oh, 90 hours of me uh, sitting here medicating, which is kind of an insane number when you think about it. Um, but the main thing, it is nearly at the end and I am so excited and I realise that it may be a really strange thing, <laughs> which fair enough, but I cannot wait to have a normal morning and wake up and simply have a cup of tea, have some breakfast without having to do this. Now, I realise that probably a lot of you maybe watching this may not be able to relate, but I'm sure there is a time in your life where you wish you had appreciated the norm. For example, how annoying is it when you have a cold and you can't breathe? This is kind of the same. I can't go anywhere without watching the time or getting ready for my next set of meds or even going in the shower without hanging my arm out. Now, don't worry, I have washed my arm. However, I literally cannot wait tomorrow night when I get to go home, have the biggest bath, scrub, and just totally relax without having to worry about this. And also being able to actually straighten my arm properly because it's got a bit stiff because I'm not actually using it. Um, and also being able to train, although I have been, and um, though I haven't been able to train normal, as much as I normally would like to because I hadn't actually been feeling well. Um, I just can't wait to be able to go into a gym and be able to lift without worrying about my arm. So here's to appreciating the norm because I know I don't enough and so I cannot wait. Um, and also I have like a week until my 100s into my relay. Uh oh. <laughs> It'll be an experience nonetheless. So I can't wait and I've never been to Maidstone or Brighton so I'm looking forward to investigating 
those two areas in a completely different way. Um, and then of course I have the Royal Parks Half Marathon, which will be fun. So that this video does not end up being at least half an hour long, because you know how much I love to talk, I am going to be uploading the rest of this tomorrow at 8pm, so make sure you go and check that out, and make sure that you subscribe and give it a like, and even a share. Um, it will be explaining to you the emotional side of Friday, and as to why I ended up crying on the doctor, but then why it ended up being a positive situation in the end, and my plans for what's next. I'll see you then.